you've ever watched any of our videos on YouTube or whatever, a lot of them talk about always looking ahead. Uh, Ty Howard talks about the fact that he's looking the distance of about a parking lot ahead on the track. He's looking that far ahead of where he's at to help him process what he's going to do next. And that's what we want to do to help you change your focus so that when you get on the street, you're going to be more uh, focused on, on the key things that are really crucial. So that's one of the things we want to help you accomplish today. The other thing, of course, is learn to ride faster. The faster you can ride comfortably, the better that improves your comfort level on the street. And that buys you more of a margin of error, uh, more reaction time, and uh, allows you to stop quicker, etc., be able to change direction quicker on the bike, things like that. Expanding your tilt meter. Um, yeah, you come here to lean. That's dragging the knees, one like goal number one for a lot of folks. And that's great. We want you to do it gradually. Like, try try your corner speed, increasing it, start slow, and then increasing it in like 1% increments. Okay, but, but learning that, getting comfortable with that, and just how far your bike can really go down, really lean and still have really great traction, um, really, again, helps your prowess on the street uh, and helps you to be safe on the street as well. The ability to recover from mistakes, and that's the first sentence it says there, every rider makes mistakes. The difference between the top GP riders and the fresh out of the MSF novice is that the GP guys catch those mistakes almost before they're made and learning just what your limits really are. They're a lot, they're a lot uh, farther than most street riders realize, and so it's a lot less reasonable to handle. Uh, by the way, I saw a whole lot of people uh, when they were coming off the track doing this, feeling some arm pump. Anybody? So that's a breathing exercise. Where you keep reminding yourself to breathe deeply, uh, especially as you're first going out and then making yourself relax your first few sessions, forcing yourself to kind of let go of the bars a little bit every time you're on the straightaway to, to release the tension in your forearms. Again, that'll help you at the end of the day to keep from having charlie horses and grabbing and stuff like that. And again, focus. Uh, the, the controlled environment of a track session frees you of the need to waste attention on the mundane tasks, looking for the errant minivan, the loose gravel, horse manure, and all the other distractions you encounter in the street. That lets you focus on your technique and the actual riding. When you get back in the rough world of street riding, you'll find that since your limits have expanded, the actual riding part will take less of your attention leaving you with more left over for those ever-present hazards. So we try to buy you time by training you in the track. As far as track etiquette goes, just before you start, make sure you're warmed up, stretching. Uh, the really fast guys stretch all day long. Before they go out every session, they're stretching out backs of their legs, their lower back, their shoulders. Really helps, um, not just prevent injury, but also just to increase their ability to track. Um, of course, making sure your tires are warmed up before you start picking up your pace, just because you were fast if you felt fast in your last lap of your last session, obviously your tires are not going to be at the same operating temperature when you first go out, even if you have tire warmers. So give yourself time each session to, uh, to get that tire temperature up. Um, when you're slowing down, when you're doing anything that's not, that you haven't done every single time you've gone around the track, if you do anything different, that arm's got to go up first to let somebody behind you know. If somebody's coming up for, for, to pass you, they're running under the assumption that you're going to do what you've been doing because they've been following you for a few quarters. Now if you all of a sudden do something different, well that spooks the guy behind you, possible collision. And while it's still the responsibility of that person to watch out for you because they're behind you, still, you don't want any kind of issues. You don't want somebody bouncing off you. We had a guy one time get a broken leg just because a guy careened off him. Neither of them went down, but it still broke his leg from the impact. So just please be predictable, and if you ever have to change what you're doing, that arm goes up to let people know that you're about to pull off the race line. Uh, riding your own ride. How many guys are here with friends? <coughs> are your friends riding with you in the same session? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, that's that's awesome. And that's I love to ride with my buddies too, but that's a worst case scenario, especially in the middle of the afternoon where everybody gets real comfortable. They start duking it out and guys suck each other way too far deep in a corner. It's happened a bunch of times in the horseshoe. Guys just come into uh, come into ten and just keep on going. <laughs> they just can't even make ten, and then eleven they try to make up for it. They high side. Um, so please um, respect your limits, and even though you're having fun with your buddies, um, ride your own ride. Okay. Um, leaving some space. 
we, we haven't talked a whole lot about the passing rules, but bottom line is you can't pass the inside of a corner. Straightaways, there is no inside or outside, that's fine. Outside of corners, I'm taking the outside line around somebody is just fine. Of course, remember that once you go outside and go offline, there's marbles out there, a little bit of sand, traction isn't as great as it is on the race line. So those things have to be taken into account. But that's fine, but you're always leaving at least six foot box. Okay, six feet in front, outside, behind, uh, around somebody else. So if somebody comes up to us and says, hey, somebody passed me really close, made me really uncomfortable. Oh yeah, what did their leathers look like? What did their bike look like? We'll be talking with that person, they get one warning, and then they start sitting out sessions. So uh, we're, we're really, we make a real big deal out of that. Uh, and also, if somebody points a black flag at you, it's usually for something similar. Either, either you did a dirty pass and got caught, or there's, some, there's a major issue with your bike. Um, and so either way, you've got to come in and see the marshal to find out what's going on. Does everybody know who the marshal is when I throw that term out? Everybody knows who the marshal is. The guy who lets us out into the track, Joe, He's the marshal, he's in charge, of, he's responsible for safety for the whole day for everybody. So he has to be kind of militant because uh, it's a big responsibility. Uh, planning passes. You don't have to you don't have to pass three guys and you know it's cool watching Pedrosa and all those guys do it, but um, plan your passes, follow somebody for a while, learn what they're doing, and then find the safest place to pass them. So that's why all of your inputs obviously need to be smooth. Because whenever they're not smooth, whenever you're jerking on the gas, jerking on the brakes, um, jerking around on the bike and, and unsettling the suspension, all those things aggravate and, and distort that contact patch. And that's when bad things happen. So when you watch these incredibly fast guys, if you get to see them close up, and I recommend corner working is an awesome experience, really enlightening, because you get to see the difference between A group and, and uh, uh, or, uh, sorry, <laughs> level one and level four. Um, yeah, the level four guys are so incredibly fast through the same corner, and it seems impossible that they could be that much faster, but it's because of those smooth inputs that uh, allow them to do that, that uh, so they don't stress those contacts. So just understand basic physics. So when you're going into a corner, watch that, that corner entry speed and work on being able to drive out earlier. Okay? And, and that's that's the focus. That's what makes guys really fast. That's what brings lap times down. And then as you get more and more comfortable, you can decrease that braking distance into the corner a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And then when you're comfortable with that, then you can increase your corner entry speed by small increments. But that's why I ask you, work on the way you deal with corners in itty bitty pieces and one chunk at a time. And we're going to be talking about it throughout the course of the day, uh, how to, instead of looking at this whole thing as a big huge elephant to tackle, just looking at little bitty pieces of the track that you can work on, and that way you'll have some kind of goal and you can kind of gauge your progress throughout the course of the day. If you try to work on everything, braking, throttle control, uh, mid-corner speed, all of those things, it just gets overwhelming and you, and you lose track. And that's the way a lot of guys crash because they're they're parking in places and overcooking in others and they don't really understand the difference because they haven't done it methodically. So we're asking you to stay with us in the classroom today, keep coming back to class and we will make you a lot faster by the end.